welcome back to season and today we're going to talk about worshiping with no agenda a few years back on one particularly sunny summer sunday a close friend of mine brought three visitors to church with her an old friend who had had a recent stroke a sister who was heavily involved in pagan religions and a niece who had not been in church for years now, my friend happens to enter into deep communion with God during worship. She's not one just to sit still in a chair. As the Spirit moves her, she kneels, raises her hands, or stands in quiet adoration. Now, being a natural-born worry word, and knowing that my friend hoped her guests would be wooed to Christ during the service, I was concerned that her guests might be offended or at least taken aback from the particularly exuberant worship time that we had that Sunday. And wouldn't you know it, every song that morning focused on God's sovereignty, the blood of the Lamb, and salvation only through Jesus Christ. Every song in that worship set directly opposed the beliefs of my friend's pagan sister. But my friend didn't hold back that Sunday. She made no excuses for her passion, but yet there was nothing in her stance that indicated that she was trying to make a point to her guests. She just wanted to bring pleasure to her king. While she honored her guests by making sure they felt at home and introducing them to the people who were sitting around her, my friend honored the heart of her king even more. God calls us to worship him in spirit and truth, being our authentic selves without trying to bring attention to ourselves, but without trying to inhibit ourselves so we don't draw attention to ourselves. While worship is often a corporate experience, that experience must spring from our individual expression of devotion that blends in with everyone else's, becoming a harmonious chorus of praise to our King. As long as our hearts remain centered on pleasing the Lord with our praise offering, then the Lord will watch over all those who we fear is going to be offended by our corporate expression of worship. When our worship becomes a vehicle to make a point to those who serve other gods, then our worship is not springing forth from pure motivations. We can have sound theological debates and open dialogue and conversations with those who don't know the Lord at any time. But during a time of worship, we're not focusing on those who are in the room with us. We are centering ourselves on our relationship with God. When we try to impress on others that our God is bigger than your God, our focus becomes centered on something else than the person we came to church to worship. It's not pleasing to the Lord, and such behavior doesn't draw anyone to the Lord. It just puts them off. Nobody likes a show-off and disingenuous acts and behaviors of affection are easily spotted as fake by anyone. However, worship that is expressed through a genuine heart of devotion not only pleases God, but it also woos those who do not yet know him to enter into a relationship with the one who we just want to adore. Psalm 34, verse 8, Taste and see that the Lord is good. May the expressions of our heart that are directed towards the King of Kings make others thirst after such a relationship themselves.